Today's video is brought to you by URCD Keys, the best source for Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys at deeply discounted prices. More details at the end of the video. Sabbath comes in with a question regarding CPU process size. And it is... When do you think one nanometer CPUs will come out and how small do you think they will get eventually? That is an interesting question. They will come out. When? Good Lord. Given all the problems of shrinking current size, that's an interesting question. But there's more detail to it than that. Which process? Because the... Yes, there's it, several of them. It's a marketing term as much as anything else. Intel's 10 nanometer is not the same as TSMC's 10 nanometer, which is not the same as Samsung's 10 nanometer, and so on and so forth. Just to give you a rough approximation, Intel's 10 nanometer is roughly equivalent to TSMC's 7, and Intel's 7 is roughly equivalent to TSMC's 5, because they measure it differently, and they they count it differently. Okay. And There's a lot of... There's a lot of fudging that goes onto some of those numbers. It, it's a, it gives you a ballpark, but to be honest, the past couple of years, they've kind of been pushing and stretching to, to get the number smaller, but they have not shrunk. The, let me put it this way. The transistors per square millimeter have not gone up as much as the nanometer size has gone down would lead you to believe it has. And here's a very interesting point. The number of functional transistors also has been shrinking in terms of percentage. When they print all those transistors that really tight, they purposely leave some of them off. Because you cannot dissipate the heat of that many transistors that dense. Yeah. So the percentage of transistors actually being used is shrinking per square millimeter as the process size shrinks. So you're not getting the full benefit of each shrink. Well, why do it? You're getting some benefit. Marketing? Part of it's marketing, part of it's heat, part of it's you are getting some benefit, but they are using less and less of the chip as it shrinks because if they used all of it, then it would just melt. They're reaching the end of the universe. It's not easy. In any case, let's start off in the beginning. In 1971. Oh, shit. Yes. I heard that. You heard that. Yes. <laughs> this is the long version. 1971, we have to go back that far? They the were big. And now they're small, and they're getting smaller. They go rogue. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Sorry. 1971, In 1971 yes, they were 10,000 nanometers. 10,000? Yes. Turn it up to 11. In 1984, they hit 1,000 nanometers. 84? From 71 to 84, they went from 10,000 to 1,000. Now, I'm going to pull up a page here. Bright screen warning for anybody watching. This is the rough scaling node and the rough year that they came out. You can see here 1984, 1987 brought 800, 1996 brought 250, 2001 brought, I'm going pretty quick, 2001 brought the 130 nanometers, 2007 brought 45. And you can come all the way down here, 2020 technically brought five nanometers, although there wasn't a lot that came out in 2020, but there was some, for example, the iPhone 12 I was gonna is say the iPhone. five nanometer. But that's like, that's the year that the very, very first thing ever came out, but it's not necessarily all the things were five nanometer. Correct. It's just PCs something. and whatnot. Notice three nanometer is due to come out in 2022 and two nanometer is due to come out in 2020. Three. But again, most devices will not be this small at this point. It will take time. Well, it'll be the iPhones. It'll be the... Yeah, the, the ones that are the high margin devices that can afford to do it, that need everything they've got. Correct. So if we follow that on a linear path, sometime in 2025, perhaps, we should be getting one nanometer CPUs. Now, my understanding is there's actually probably going to be like a 1.3 or 1.5 nanometer size in there somewhere. It depends on which company, TSMC... Yeah. Samsung, can we say Intel with a straight face? Who knows? Maybe Pat will pull a magic bean out of somewhere and say, here we go, this is amazing. Um, there is a diminishing return happening. In the past five to 10 years, the shrinks have not been producing the same results that they used to. Has everybody noticed that clock speeds have stopped going up? Has everybody mm -hmm. noticed that the per core generation improvements have been 
there, but not there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Intel was sleeping in the 2010s. Yes, there was kind of a brief period where AMD wasn't competitive. We got a nice boost with some recent shrinks. Ryzen gave us more cores, most especially 7 nanometer TSMC gave us more cores and faster cores. That, that's good. With reasonable power efficiency, whereas Intel yep. went, hey, 250 watts is normal for a CPU. Um, They'll address that. Alder Lake's coming. Raptor Lake is coming. Meteor Lake is coming. Lunar Lake is coming. Jumpin' a Lake is coming. Sorry. Lava Lake. I'm just waiting for Lava Lake. Uh, <laughs> bottom of a lake. <laughs> cool it down really quick, like, because it's hot. <laughs> In any case. So where are they going after one nanometer then? 0. 0.7. 0.7? The, there's there's a point in here somewhere. Is this where the quantum computing and the AI and all that stuff is going to take over? Well, they're going to leave silicon because the the number of silicon atoms between each transistor is shrinking to the point to where the quantum tunneling effect is becoming a problem. Yeah. And it is one reason why they're having to leave transistors turned off heat, uh, energy density, cooling capacity, we will probably need better coolers. The integrated heat spreaders we use now that protect the dye yeah. do create an additional thermal barrier and layer that the heat has to get through. If they could design a combination chip and cooler that was married together, like if, you're, if your heat sink and fan or cooler or liquid cooler was married in the clean room in the factory mm -hmm. and it was shipped to you as a combined unit, they could actually get better power efficiency and higher energy density because they'd be removing the consumer aspect. See, they have to make compromises for consumer chips yeah. because they have to ship a retail package yep. with a retail chip that has a heat spreader that normal consumers can touch and then stick into a motherboard that has to be able to be purchased for $100. And then you've got to be able to squirt some thermal paste on it and then take a consumer cooler and just glomp it on there. Mm -hmm. And you kind of screw it down and you hope it mostly is flat and exactly. it's balanced. And it's, yeah. But if you mm -hmm. had motherboard CPU cooler that was married in a precision factory where everything was laid out right and tested, they could cut those corners and boost performance, they cut could. power consumption, and cut heat. But you would lose the ability to just swap parts the way we have today. It's a trade-off. Well, unless you could add cooling to make it even cooler. Do you know what I mean? Like to cool it down more. But The weakness is the connection between the top of the CPU die Correct. and the copper of the My cooling My only problem plate. with that is they'd put shitty coolers on there and it'd be like, well, what's the point? Well, you would need to use a better cooler. I know you would, but they don't seem to do that. You asked where they're going. I'm saying that's one possibility. I'm not. I... So they have some very cool names and technologies that are definitely coming. Um, what's interesting is TSMC's three nanometer process will still use FinFET, yeah. which is the fin field effect transistors. It's the same thing that we've been using now for, shoot, more than five years. I mean, mm -hmm. we've been stuck on that for a while. Intel's been using it a while. Uh, Samsung is going to be switching to gate all around uh, fit technology on their three nanometer. Yep. But TSMC is not switching to gate all around until two nanometer. Correct. And then after gate all around, which will take us down to probably one, maybe even 0. 0.7, is MBC fit. Fit. Multi, multi. Go ahead. Multi bridge channel field effect transistor. Sure. Multi bridge channel. Fit. That. Uh, I suspect there are a dozen people in the world who understand this <laughs> very well. Okay. It, that, it's so specialized. This is really, really advanced stuff. And it's... Well, they already have to be working on smaller than one nanometer now. Because five years from now is 2026, which kind of fits into the timeline. Well, replacing the silicon with, um, and I'm desperately trying to think of what it's called here off the top of my head. Uh, Say it again. You mean... What, what silicon oh. is replacing? What's going to replace silicon? Gra gra um, it starts with a G. 
you know what? I, without looking it up, I don't remember what it's called. You cannot remember everything. Nope. Somebody in chat will tell us. Someone will. In any case, you may see devices in 2025 using one nanometer chips. Graphite? Your desktop... Is it graphite? Is it graphite? Your desktop CPU is not going to be one nanometer in 2025. No. Your iPhone might be. Yeah, your Your iPhone. Samsung Galaxy might be. We are going to need to start changing the design and the sort of the... Graphene. Graphene. G-R-A-P-H-E-N-E. -E. Yeah. But that's going to cost more. Yes. And it's going to take time to learn how to use. A gallium nitride. It, it's some fancy stuff. And even that is only a short-term fix because I would like to point out the fact there's coming a point at where there's only a couple of hundred atoms in between the transistors. That's true. They cannot go down to five atoms between the transistors. There's not enough physical universe there. Quantum computers will come at some point. And they're also talking about Molly Bendham too. I don't even know what that is. Uh, it kind of sounds like vibranium. <laughs> it might as well. It's unobtainium. It's unobtainium. <laughs> vibranium. Where's Wakanda again? I know. Siri didn't know how to get to Wakanda. Nope. It's going to be an interesting number of years. Here's the funny part. Um, the Intel CEO, I have another article here. Intel CEO Pat, how do you say his last name? Gelsinger. Gelsinger said he expects 10 good years of growth in the semiconductor industry during a panel where's, at CNBC's Evolve. That 10 years again. Well, it's been 10 years for a while. It wasn't that long ago, I remember, that they were worried about getting down to, you know, 40 and 50 nanometers, thinking that that might be the limit. And then they found new things, they found new things. There's going to come a point at where smaller is simply not possible because. Well, I would think they would have to st start stacking rather than going smaller. Well, Which is kind of what that 3D chiplet but thing But here's is. where you go small. Yeah, well, stacking will let them increase transistor density by making 3D stacks of transistors. That's what the AMD thing they're working on is yep. for the cache, the level 3 cache. But that doesn't shrink the transistors. That just lets you get more of them in a given space. To shrink the transistors, you have to pull an Ant-Man. You have to go subatomic. Yeah in the quantum realm, and that's quantum computing. Exactly. Because the truth of the matter is, when we were growing up, we were always taught that atoms were the smallest thing. Correct. Protons, neutrons, and electrons, yep. that was the end of the universe. No, now there's quarks and all sorts of things. It turns out it goes way deeper than atoms. And eventually, computers will probably be able to be built subatomic. And then particles, can ex they can exist in two places at the same time. There's all sorts of things with quantum, quantum stuff. Wrap your brain. See, that's when AI is going to happen. I believe when we get true AI is when you get true quantum computers where literally the particle could exist in two places at once and then not at all. And then again. <laughs> Physics does not operate at this level the same way it operates at that level. Correct. And one of the challenges is an interface between a world in which literally the laws of physics do not apply as we know them. Yeah. Which is way above my pay grade. I'm, yeah, it's, that's... <laughs> that is, I make zero claim to understand quantum anything other than being able to say the word and sort of vaguely understand the concepts or sort of like I could read the Wikipedia article to you, but that's... A, so are they going smaller? Yes. How? It will leave silicon at some point because it will leave the atoms at some point. Here's what's fascinating. When CPUs were first invented nearly 50 years ago. 50 years ago. And when they started shrinking throughout the 80s and into the early 90s. If you had told the engineers in 1989 when the 486 chip was launched with one million transistors. One million. If you'd have said that within one generation, we would have billions and billions of transistors, literally 10 to 20 million 486 chips worth of transistors on a single chip. I'll bet you they'd have been like, 
okay, you, you need to put that bottle down, sir. You've had enough to drink. And yet we do. Okay. We have chips today with 20 billion transistors, which is literally 20 million times more transistors as a 486 chip. Mm. Crazy. That is very crazy. Hopefully that answers this question. And maybe some of you guys found it interesting. I would encourage you to do some more reading if you're interested. This particular um, well goes very deep if you want to start reading about chip process technologies. Because, I mean, even just reading about the difference between FinFit and Gate All Around Fit can, I mean, oh, yeah, that's your afternoon right there. Assuming, it, And if you understand it better than I do, please leave a comment in the comment section below. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. $15 gets you a Windows 10 Professional OEM key that is a real product key, activates directly with Microsoft, use it forever as it links to your Microsoft account and it works through reinstalls. Get a full copy of Office 2019 Professional Plus for about $50 that redeems at setup.office.com using your Microsoft account. It also works forever through reinstalls. We have been using URCD keys for almost three years now and recommend you do so as well.